So, so let me ask you about Nancy Pelosi. When you talk about showing up with brass knuckles, the former House Speaker, of course, um, gave that interview on on Morning Joe with Joe and Mika, and she made it clear that Joe Biden had a decision to make, even though Joe Biden has said that he's running, that the decision is already made. Here's what she said. Well, well Joe Biden's already made that decision. It's up to the president to decide if he is going to run. Uh, we're all encouraging him uh, to, to make that decision uh, because time is running short. So, so you, you started to speak there, but she's saying that there's a decision to be made, but, but he's already said he made a decision. What do you say to the former speaker? I, I would say is, is that, uh, you know, as far as I know, she's never run for any office outside of the House. Uh, and she's never run for the president, and she certainly never won that as well. And, you know, he has already made his decision. Joe Biden has made that decision. He is staying in this race and he's going to take this through to the convention and to November. And I'm going to back him on that. And if I have any advice for for Joe Biden, that that's is, is, you know, you know, stay in if that's what you believe. And I have I have his back 100 percent. And in a New York Times opinion piece today, Clooney declared it was time for Biden to step down, writing, I love Joe Biden, he wrote. I consider him a friend and I believe in him, believe in his character, believe in his morals. In the last four years, he's won many of the battles he's faced. But the one battle he cannot win is a fight against time. None of us can. It's devastating to say it, but the Joe Biden I was with three weeks ago, the fundraiser, was not the Joe big effing deal Biden of 2010. He wasn't even the Joe Biden of 2020. He was the same man we witnessed at the debate. We can put our heads in the sand and pray for a miracle in November, or we can speak the truth. Joe Biden is a hero who saved democracy in 2020. We need him to do it again in 2024. Clooney's observations are not unique. Joe Biden is a decent man who, like I said, has done nothing wrong. He hasn't been caught in a scandal. He is just aging. And that reality makes him, I think, increasingly likely to lose re-election to a Republican candidate who, again, is just a few years younger, who's, we're going to be in the same boat a few years from now we elect him, and who has done a lot wrong, a shocking amount wrong, and who's promised to do more wrong if he wins. And again, there is no conversation about whether he should drop out because that candidate's party is too afraid to ask him to step aside or do anything against him because any suggestion from any Republican that Donald Trump should step aside for the good of their party or the country or face accountability for his many crimes and sins is met with rabid rhetorical attacks, excommunication, and often death threats. David. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have a plan for 2024 and on, so I just want them to enact that plan. And she's supportive of him staying on the ticket, and I trust her judgment. So if he, if he needs to stay, he needs to stay. I think that people are more concerned about the aesthetic of what it means to be president. But Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have been working since they got into Congress. And I think we need to make sure that the people who are in office are the people who are doing the work. Stop, stop, but stop, here's the stop. deal. No, 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 no. Let me just point. say this. You support Donald Trump. This is a no, guy I, I, who began. I, I, I haven't announced who I'm. Okay, I work well, here. You're obviously not supporting Donald. You're not supporting Joe Biden. I don't give money to anybody. I'm I will on happily the give all my money to Joe Biden because if the other choice is Donald Trump, that's a binary choice. But, but okay, the other choice is a guy who began lying about how to dodge the draft because of made-up bone spurs. He doesn't even remember which foot. He had those so what level of lying is acceptable? This is what I don't get about about this Biden versus Trump lying debate. Well, but where apparently, is apparently, if you tell one less lie than Donald Trump, that's good enough. Is that the bar you want to set? This is a scandal. What has been covered up about Biden for the last three and a half years or more by his staff, by Democrats? Look at this George Clooney op-ed. Well, three weeks ago, you know, we all saw. It. Well, why didn't anybody say anything that night? It's not that they care about the office of the president. It's that they care they're losing. On That's why that it's coming. I, I think you clear. got it all wrong. When uh, I think that, well, that, listen, this is not an administration that has lied. It just has to. <laughs> oh, okay. Not you one can lie? laugh and you can Not stop. one lie? No, but you supported an administration that lied about the size of the crowd at the inauguration. Do you honestly expect us to believe that they've never lied? I think lied. you're confusing administrations. And I think part of the reason that this hasn't been shut down, frankly, is because there's been breathless and somewhat reckless reporting by are media. You, the and journalists? People, you're saying the journalists are wrong? Yes, I do. I think that when journal... No, okay. Let me give you an example.
So this is where I think we are. Uh, it's Thursday, and clearly, uh, insanity has been divided up into sane and those who are literally, well, perhaps they should go and have a cognitive test themselves. The, should we say, the cleansing of the buffoon, which is the former president of the United States of America, uh, and some of the clumsy, crazy, rude, just inaccurate bullshit, we can use that word he comes out with, and how it's cleansed up and then packaged as if to say that uh, this is a reasonable... Well, that's what CBS did, for example, right? You have somebody who went and did a rally, uh, just come out with just preposterous garbage, uh, and in comparison to uh, President Biden, you know, you could say potentially it's had a frontal lobotomy. But what is going on at the moment is like some idiot... I've never seen anything like it. Uh, and even MSNBC are now joining in on the act. Uh, and the Navarro's comment for me is just spot on. It's like, and they're not even talking to the voters. They're just not. I mean, CNN, ABC, um, Fox, of course. It's like there is some hunt going on. Uh, right now, anything Nancy Pelosi says is overanalyzed. Anything Chuck Schumer says is overanalyzed. But you, the voter, uh, nobody cares about your opinion. No one's asking you what you think because you're irrelevant. You have to understand one thing. You, well, you're the clicker. That's all they see you as. You're going to click on anything to do with Trump and make them more money. That's how it is. This is what it's down to. This is nothing about uh, policy. It's not anything, for example, oh, one candidate has a particular position when it comes to uh, uh, investment in housing. One candidate has one particular view, uh, another candidate has another stance. Nothing to do with that at all. And also as well, what's really crazy here, you have cable news stations, news, ha, news, bleh. sorry, uh, you have cable news stations, Stop shouting. Sorry. Who aren't really interested in reporting news? The fact that uh, there's been uh, some voices within the Republican Party who clearly stated they're not going to vote for Trump. Well, that's irrelevant. An op-ed. There's an op-ed every single second. Whether it's George Clooney, uh, whether it's somebody who works for a cable news station, whether it's a former politician or somebody who once carried Obama's uh, briefcase over the tarmac on the way to Air Force One. They've all got an opinion and they're all weighing in now. This is their moment. Understand one thing at the bottom of all of this isn't necessarily an interest on who is going to be the uh, candidate or the best candidate for the Democratic Party. That's not what it's about. It's like... How can they line their own pockets, all right? This is about money. First, second, and third, all right? It's like Fox News has now uh, decided to take over everything, and what we're seeing is the result. Normally, this type of story would live within the... Uh, right now, uh, the whole world has been foxified. It really has. And do they really think, yeah, they replaced Biden. Suddenly it's all going to get better. Everything is going to go away. Jake Tapper is obsessed. I don't know Jake Tapper's uh, former career, but he's literally stuck everything right now on removing Biden because he knows more than you'll ever know. Right? He is the most important person as far as uh, he's concerned when it comes to deciding who should be on the ticket for the Democratic Party. And right now, this feeding, it's like a feeding fest. I mean, you've actually got a crazy situation where Trump is telling George Clooney to butt out of it. I think Trump's words were to George Clooney, uh, stick to TV. Uh, now, confession, I'm a Brit on the outside, uh, currently very infused by the England football team. And you're thinking, well, what does he know about American politics? Well, I know what I see, and that's a fact. Right now, there are, mm, well, Biden is judged with one particular stick, and uh, while well, the red carpet is rolled out for the former losing president. You only need to take just one, one day 
Yeah? And you can check, it's on the channel. We put this clip up. Biden spoke at uh, the NATO gathering, the 75th uh, anniversary of NATO. I think it's the 75th anniversary. And Trump was screeching, whining, and just going on about garbage at a rally in Florida, Durrell. But who was the one who's incognito? Oh, it's Biden. Even Chris Hayes at MSNBC, who you do credit with having a brain and knowing a little bit about things, even he's joined the bandwagon. It's like, what's happening now? There's like, oh, I must be, oh, it's fashionable to hit Biden. I must say something derogative. Oh, I've not said anything bad about Biden for two minutes. Oh, I must say something. Oh, do you know what? I can get a booking on so many different cable news stations now. If I go on and say, Biden must go, I'm making money, I'm making money, I'm making money. I repeat, money is at the end of it. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Uh, but one thing with Biden, I'll say this very clearly. The one thing with Biden, if there is one politician who understands about uh, overcoming adversity, you know, carrying on when it gets going really, really tough. I mean, they were attacking his wife on Monday, by the way. On Monday, Fox and Fien said, breaking news, Jill Biden is a wife, Jill Biden is a mum, uh, Jill Biden is exercising her right to an opinion. No news on Melania Trump because I just said it's a different light, set of rules. Where do you think this is going to all go? Comment section now, please. Full steam ahead for now. That every NATO member is committed to doing their part to keep the alliance strong. A Biden aides point to an aggressive travel schedule in the coming weeks. He's set to go to Michigan on Friday, Nevada next week, as well as an aggressive fundraising schedule with events planned in Texas, in Colorado, and two in California as proof that he is not going anywhere. And in response to those comments from George Clooney, Jake, a campaign official who attended that Los Angeles fundraiser tells me that George Clooney left three hours before the president. So clearly the gloves are off, Jake. What, but what does that mean that George Clooney left three hours? What's, what's the point? The point of that is to suggest that Biden's stamina is better than Clooney's and Clooney didn't have you know, eyes on the entire event. That's the response uh, to, uh, to the Clooney op-ed. Okay. Kayla Tashi, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Um, Karen Finney. Yeah. Okay. I, would love to talk about I, I will tell you, I know this is your favorite topic. I, yeah. I, I, uh, look, it just seems like <laughs> every day is going to be like this with people saying he should drop out. People that are Democratic Party stalwarts. George Clooney gets nothing out of this. This is, I mean, what does he, what does he gain? The, the only reason to do this is because he feels like he needs to convey this. Yeah. Um, how does this end? <laughs> so let's just stipulate to the facts that this is not good. This is bad. Let's just say the <laughs> obvious, right? Okay, thank you. Um, but with mem here's part of what I think is happening this week. With members in town.